everybody in my mind is, is just on a scale from zero to Beatles. Bought a gold Mercedes and we took it out in the woods and we posed around and we were wearing fur coats and motorcycle helmets and I had a staff and an eagle feather and you know, crystals and it was just like... <laughs> I play the, uh, the thing that kind of jangles. Hey, we need to get this guy <laughs> involved. I don't know, I don't know why. <laughs> I always loved singing, but I was always told to stop. Hi, we're Moto Pony. And you're watching Band in Seattle. Tonight on Band in Seattle, longtime locals Moto Pony grace the stage with old songs and new recorded live at Victory Studios. Band in Seattle, uncover the music that moves you. Brand new. My name is Gabriel Molinaro. Hi, I'm Daniel Blue. Hi, my name is Joseph DiNatale. Hi, I'm Timothy Graham. And I am the keyboardist in Motopony. Lead singer in Motopony. And I play bass in Motopony. I'm the lead guitarist, and I appreciate you watching. Nobody told me it's another story. People getting older, hearts are getting colder. school I thought I wanted to be a fashion designer. I remember when I was 19 I went to my cousin's band practice and so I was just like overcome. I mean just overwhelmed with the desire to like to sing and I was just filled with melody and lyric and I had never felt anything as strong as that desire. night I had a dream that I was like walking through this tunnel something kind of came into me and I walked out onto a stage and there were these musicians I just said are you ready and they said yeah we're ready and everybody's smiling and was so happy and there was this sea of people as far as I could see and I just exploded into that microphone with anything I could think of I could do There were several iterations of the early Motopony. My vision was that I would get like a hip hop producer to produce a folk record, and then it would be this hybrid of like Moto and Pony. I finally found my guy, his name was Josiah Sherman. He went by Buddy Ross at the time, and he made that record in his basement. Then he built the band, he brought in the first players in the band, and so I moved into a laundry room in Capitol Hill and that's like the side of someone's apartment. Barely hung on through the beginning and then the next thing we knew we were like getting flown to Austin, getting flown to New York, playing in front of industry people, and just getting money tossed at me and it was just happening. We had gone to India and I came home and I was just screwed up and uh, I really kind of needed a reset. I got sober, told the band I was taking a break. I went to Abbey Road and made a solo record. I hired one guy to, to like play background tracks and it was me and the guitar and him on a computer and it was awful. It, this works when it's rock and it's fun and there's drums and I get to freak out and be Freddie Mercury and not Bob Dylan. I really kind of came to the conclusion that the solo record needed to be a motopony record and that I needed a band.
I was always really inspired watching Moto Pony play. I was just a fan. He had me come over to his house and we were talking. I was like, thinking about putting Moto Pony back together. And he was just like, I'm in. <laughs> and I was like, wait, I wasn't really offering you the position, but I guess we could try to write a few songs. We wrote When We Were Young, we wrote a song called Rainbow Halo, and you know, it was just like, whoa. It felt immediately comfortable. In Daniel, I find a soulmate, somebody who I, I feel completely connected to. It's kind of what I've always hoped for. So yeah, he was the first to kind of just fall out of the sky. Joseph Denatale, love at first sight. I kind of just showed up uh, to the rehearsal space one night and he's sitting there and he was like, can I play the bongos? Yeah, go grab those bongos. Hitting the congas and uh, I think Tim said to Daniel afterwards like, he has to be in our band. I don't care what, just promise him anything. Like <laughs> after that session, I was like, you're our drummer. <laughs> like, was, you know, he ended up being the bass player, but like, he's amazing. He was just like, so right. And then, you know, we needed keys. Dave's my neighbor, we share a wall. They got me to play like one show with them. Loved it, and it's just like, he's perfect. He taught me to sing folk music, and then I taught him to play rock and roll, constantly pushing himself to get better. And I know because I hear him all the time practicing. And the experience of like learning the songs was so great that I just wanted to keep going. you'll find out a lot more about Moto Pony. And she says, wait for me. You'll know me by the mark on my breath. Wait For Me, found out, has now been spun on Spotify seven million times, which is shocking. Wait For Me, really, really, this is a good story. The band was on the rise and I was caught in this web of insanity between two young women. And one was very established, and the other was a dancer, and was just wild. I was losing my mind, I was two different people. I broke down one night, I just said, all right, universe, like, like I need a way out, I need a sign, I need something, and that night I had a dream. I was building a bridge over the River Thames. I was sort of surveying, watching the moon rise, and like very proud. I look over, and there's this very frilly pink bridge that is further than mine, and much more put together and far more beautiful. And it pisses me off. So I take this flying leap, I land on the other bridge, and I'm looking at it, and it's made of plates. This is the most beautiful structure I've ever seen. And out from behind one of the girders, this woman, emerges and she's like, I'm building this, you know, and I was in love. And we sat down on the bridge and I was like, I think I'm in love with you. And she said, oh, that's, that's 
silly. And then she had this mark above her breast, and I was staring at it. And she was like, you know, what do you want? What do you want to do about that? And I was like, I think I'd like to kiss it. And she said, Well, you know, that's ridiculous. And then I start to float away, and she says, Wait for me. You'll know me by the mark on my breast. I woke up and it was Super Bowl Sunday and my roommate was having a bunch of people over and I locked myself in my room and I wrote that song. And about a month and a half later, I developed a birthmark. And I realized, she's me. A girl who wants the things I want. Working with Daniel is uh, different than working with a lot of musicians uh, because Daniel relates to music in a different way. I think his musical inspiration very much comes from his heart and his soul. You know, as you've seen, Daniel plays a uh, guitar with three strings, um, that, and he didn't start playing until he was, I think, 27 or 28 years old. Whereas with some musicians, you can kind of, you know, talk about technical aspects of music with. That's not necessarily the case with Daniel. Trying to find ways to translate the ideas that he's hearing into like something that makes sense musically, which is a different way of writing. And it's one thing I appreciate about, you know, working with him uh, is because there's uh, a lot less thinking involved. It's all kind of like hearing and going with your, your instincts. If you ever sober up, you'll see this city is a desert. And the only source of water is the love you find at home. And if you live alone, then brother, you had better take a lover or go out and find your home among the artist and the bum. I was incredibly lonely when I moved to Seattle. I had a really good thing going in Tacoma. Tacoma's small enough to be able to invest into a community that way. And it took me a long time to find my people in Seattle. And early on, I was, I was very lonely. And I had made some plans with some people. I was gonna meet them at Sun Liquor, and they weren't there. So I sat at the bar alone. And I think I said, good evening to someone. And they said, what? And I said, good evening. And they said, hi. You know, it's just like, I don't fit in, you know, like, <laughs> I was like, what's wrong with me? She say, be together, be together, be together, be together. So I'm walking home and it starts to rain. And so I just like stepped off the sidewalk and I was in the gutter, wading through the gutter. Like, I'm really going to have a bad day today. But that got me thinking, before my mom passed away, she sat me down, because she knew she was dying and none of us would believe it. She knew she had cancer. But she sat me down and she just told me all life secrets and all this, you know, stuff that at the time I was kind of like, mm. And in that moment, for whatever reason, I really started to consider that list of things that she had said. Yeah, I just started singing them to myself. It was so profound that here I am in this moment in my life, I'm like, be together and know the weather. Things that a mother would say if she knew she was on her way out. Yeah, the she, the she and she is spirit is my mother. And she is spirit.
After the break, lots more to uncover about Moto Pony. You're kind of born and you don't have a say in it, but then you die. Do you have a biblical name? Yeah, Can you hold an instrument? Yeah. Great, you're in. Diamonds is a, my version of a perfect song. It's a pop song. It's like maybe clocks in at like, you know, two minutes or something. I like concise, clean writing. King of Diamonds. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about King of Diamonds. I mean, it's probably one of the most recognized songs. It's the song where some random person is like, Moto Pony, King of Diamonds. Whenever I play it, I just kind of feel like I didn't write this, I didn't come up with it, but I'm playing the song that a ton of people know and love and feels really special. I've been looking for the king of diamonds But the queen will work just fine I've been looking for the king of diamonds Until the deep Yeah, that's all we ask is, uh, do you have a biblical name? Can you hold an instrument? Great, you're in. like us to, you know, find a sense of stability and find our groove. There's still a kind of a lot of things that are, that are, are in motion. I mean, we want to see as many people hear these songs and, and hope that it connects with people of different, you know, ages, classes, races, cultures, the gamut. You know, we want it to be an inclusive community and the songs are about love and joy and healing and, and so I'm hoping that we see that that response just kind of goes out and comes back in a, in a way that is sustaining, that we're able to perform and play music uh, every, every day that we can breathe. You're kind of born and you don't have a say in it, and then you die and <laughs> you have like this time in between and what are you going to do with your life? And I feel like making art and making music, there's like nothing else that I really want to do. You know there's magic in the forest Probable, impractical, ignorant of actual tune of mother freaking doom. Last 
year when I was at the edge, I was really bummed out. I thought, okay, maybe I'll write that book. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll write that movie. And, and, yeah, and then I recognized, oh, I'm at that crossroads, and I wait for the direction, because that has served me so well. I mean, I almost heard a voice say, Motor Pony is not done yet. So I was like, oh, guess I'm still doing Motor Pony. <laughs> I better call the old band. I called them up, like, hey, you guys want to? No. OK. But I guess if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. We'll see. You know, and then these the dudes just fell out of the sky like cats and dogs, and here we are. that moved you tonight, go to BandonSeattle.com where you can find out more about Moto Pony and watch their full concert. Tune in next week to uncover more music that moves you on Band in Seattle.